Okay, so today we have a Wells Gardner U5000 that is in vertical collapse. Um, if we, I can't show you the paper because it's got uh, the owner's name and address on it, and I can't really crop it out with my hand. But yeah, it just says, "Hi, monitor has vertical collapse. Please ship to," and then he gives the address and phone number. So that's all I have. So I just opened this up to verify that what's in here is what's in here. And this is the way that it came to me. So if we look at this, um, it's just kind of haphazardly in here. The neck board isn't protected at all, but it seems to be okay. Uh, the traces and everything on here aren't uh, really broken. This one here is lifted a bit, but nothing that really is detrimental. Uh, as a matter of fact, yeah, that solder joint is just broken off of the just broken off the trace. The other two are somewhat intact, but the middle one, not too bad, and the, the blue on the outside, yeah, I think that's broken as well on that solder joint. So we'll clean this up the way we normally do, but this is not, this is actually very minor compared to how most of them are. So that's nothing that we can't clean up, so neck board, normal neck board work will be required. Uh, and as a matter of fact, while we're doing this, it, well, it looks like all the caps are original, so we'll probably be doing a cap kit. Uh, so let's go ahead and remove our neck board. Yep, this has never been removed. Uh, the glue is still there for the G2 wires, so that's fun to take off. And let's disconnect our interconnect cable. There we go. And now our neck board is free. So we can set that aside, do the work we do to that normally later down the road. But for now, we just have one thin layer of bubble wrap, and this just kind of sitting down here, and sliding around in uh, in shipment. So, not packed too well, but it seems to have survived okay initially, from what we can tell. And like always, when these chassis get sent in to me, they did not include the remote board. Fortunately, I have one. So, oh, now that I think about it. It's possible, I need to get with the owner and find out. It's possible that this was collapsed because they didn't have the remote board plugged in. That's a very common thing. Uh, people are uneducated and they don't realize that without the remote board plugged in, it's gonna have collapse and you'll damage components. So it's possible that that was the case, but we're gonna proceed as if that was not the case. Uh, it looks like these caps are original. Uh, you can clearly tell because of the glue. You can see the factory glue there and the, the f uh, factory glue right here and the factory glue on this one and as well as this one. So, yep, yeah, and right here as well. So yep, yeah, original caps, original everything. This appears to be uh, untouched. If we go ahead and get this off of here, we can look on the back side and oh my lord, gosh darn it. <laughs> Someone's been trying to fix this previously and it looks like we're gonna have some fun uh, rework going on here. <laughs> oh no. I don't even, th uh, yeah, possibly. I was going to say, I don't even think that that's supposed to be connected, but it very well may be. Um, well, gosh darn it. I hate it when we get uh, chassis across the bench that have had work like this done already because it makes my job a bit, a bit more difficult. Um, we've got some damage here. I don't think those are cut traces. We'll check that. Uh, all right, so I guess... Yeah, they've been doing some work here. They've been, yep, they've been messing with R303 and D302. Those are some components for collapse. Uh, but I think what we'll do is we'll just start with checking the normal components. They have reflowed the resolution connector. The normal, almost always, number one problem with the 5000 is the burned up solder joints, but these all look pretty good. We'll reflow them. I'll reflow them the way that I reflow them as well, but um, 
All right, so let me grab my meter. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think it's in the other room because I am unprepared. That's why this is the amateur channel. And I'm just curious as to whether or not the this is the cause of the collapse and they're not realizing that. So I actually am going to kind of cut away here and see if I can get with the owner and ask them if that's the case, if they're testing this with the remote board plugged in. And I also need to go in the other room and grab my meter because I'm unprepared. So let me get that done. When I come back, I'll have an answer regarding this, and then I'll have the meter and we'll start doing some testing. Well, I contacted the owner of this, and I haven't heard back yet. It's been a while, and uh, in the interest of getting this done, I will uh, go ahead and proceed on as if or under the assumption that they are using a remote board. And once I hear back, hopefully by the end of the video, uh, I'll have heard back from the owner. We'll find out about this. But we're going to proceed now as if um, this is being hooked up and tested, and that's not the problem. So the most uh, common issues when you're dealing with vertical collapse... Actually, you know what? I just realized... Oh, yeah, it is vertical. Okay, I was like... I, for some reason, I thought there for a moment and just said collapse, but... Um, okay, I noticed that this is disconnected, which it should be. This is a vertical sweep mod. The vertical sweep mod is uh, supposed to be connected you can see here, this is our low res connection. This is the 15 kilohertz, and this is the medium res, the high. Uh, so for 15, this is supposed to be connected. You can see that there is a white wire here going into this first pin, and the second pin has nothing. It's usually a cutoff black wire, yeah. Uh, for the 15 or low res connection, you, you must have this connected. You want to have the white wire on this 30 volt pin right here. You want to have the white wire connected to that pin when you're running the 15 kilohertz selection. And on the medium res uh, 25 kilohertz selection, you do not want it hooked up. But to keep the wires... Uh, excuse me? Uh, <laughs> we're going to have to repin that. Uh, okay, well, let's get back to what I was saying. So on the 25 kilohertz selection, you want to just simply move the connector over to the blank pin. Uh, like that, so the post is now on the blue, the black, and then the white's not connected. Um, so having it just unhooked completely is the same as having it plugged in on the black wire for 25. So that was correct, but uh, this this just came off of here, and looks like I'm gonna have to repin that. I have the technology; it can be repinned. Let's. Uh, bend the locking tab out and push this pin out. Oh well, yeah, I got some of those, just a standard socket. Um, so we'll do that in a bit. Uh, but for the meantime, I'm also going to have to acquire a screw and a nut to attach this in here. I always, to prevent this from flopping around and the wires breaking, I always like to simply you can see there's an extra hole right there. I take this and put the screw through here and put a nut and that bend, it, bend this over a bit to keep it from shorting out. And that pretty much uh, prevents these wires from busting off. And as a matter of fact, a couple of the wires are broken off already. If we look here, you can see a couple of the wires are broken off here already. So I think what I'll do is I'm just going to go ahead and remove this and fix it up later. Let's get... Uh, uh, help me remember here. Orange is inboard. I don't think it actually matters because it's going through a resistor, but orange is inboard. Okay. So I have those wires out now. And our sweep mod removed, so I'll set that up here. We'll get that fixed up later. Uh, but for now, let's proceed as if uh, this is not the issue. So the most common thing to check here for vertical collapse is R303, this guy right here, R303. If that's out of spec, out of tolerance, that'll cause collapse. Uh, D302 is this guy right here. If that's shorted or open, that'll cause collapse. Uh, D603 is this diode in here by the vertical IC. If this is open or uh, shorted, that'll cause uh, collapse. And then, of course, we have our vertical IC. If it's open or shorted, that'll cause collapse. So those are the four main components, and we'll get those tested and see if we can figure out what's going on with that. So we'll begin with uh, R303. 
And R303 should read around 1.2 ohms in circuit. Now, let's see if we can get that in frame there. There we go. So if we do R303, should be around 1.2, 1 uh, give or take. 1.1, 1.0, 1.1, 1.1, 3. Oh, we got bad connection here. 1.0, 1.1. Yes, I mean, that's not norm That's not out of the normal reading range, but it should be somewhere closer to 1.2, 1.3. I wonder if we can just take a leg out here. Someone has... Oh, now, wait a minute. Someone has done some work here with this. Let's make sure they didn't mess this up. And... That should go here. Now that trace is messed up. That's part of D302. But, we've got good continuity. That goes straight to here. Okay, well let's see if we can just take one of these out and measure it out of circuit. Just to make sure. Alright. Back to ohms. And... one point zero. That's a bit low, but... Uh, it should be 1.2, but I don't think that's enough to cause collapse. If anything, it caused you know, minor collapse, but not complete collapse. Of course, I'm assuming that they mean complete collapse and not partial collapse. Um, got a bunch of damn glue here. I'm not going to be able to get... Oh, well, I did. And the pad's all messed up. No wonder they reflowed this. It's a bunch of glue here. Yeah, that's all supposed to be connected. Let's do a little reflow in here. What we need to do, you know what we need to do is hook this up and verify the discrepancy, but I just wanted to do some testing first to see if we can have an obvious failure point because then if something has failed then we pretty much confirm the issue without having to hook it up but all right let's get back to back to life and back to reality all right uh, so R302 again R303 I'm sorry R303 1.1 .1, uh, D302 we want to make sure that it reads properly. And it does, 0 0.42 voltage drop. Does it read the opposite direction? I think it's okay if it does, yeah. Yeah, see, it, it's climbing up. It's, it's blocking, it's only blocking one way. That's the way it should be, so. Those are good. Uh, let's test D603. It should only read one direction. If it reads both directions, our vertical IC is shorted. So we are correct. 0.5 volt is dropped this way. And we should not get a reading the opposite direction. And we do not. So our vertical IC does not appear to be shorted. Let's verify that no pins ring to ground that shouldn't. If I recall, it's been a while since I've shot a, a vertical collapse issue, but there's only one pin should ring to ground, and I think that is this pin here. So if we go to continuity and we go to ground, that is not the right pin. It's that one. Okay, so one, two, three, four. That's supposed to be ground. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So... We don't have a shorted IC, we don't have a bad 603, a bad 302, or a bad 303. So it could come down to having bad caps, and it could come down to not having the remote board plugged in, I don't know yet. So let's, uh, let's fix up our vertical sweep mod, get it reinstalled, 
let's reseat this connector just to make sure. Uh, hey, and it's not really that burned up either. Let's put it back on the 25 for now. And let's put this back on before we forget. All right, so let's get this sweep mod reinstalled and fixed up, and then we'll te then we'll test this and see what we get here. Uh, I'm gonna have to fix some of the neck board before we try because we'll be missing colors. It doesn't, I guess, it doesn't matter if we are missing colors or not. But all right, what did I say? Orange was inboard. Since we're running on uh, 20, uh, 25 kilohertz, we do not need to have this connected, so we'll just leave it out for now. I'll fix the pin and the socket at a later time. And we'll just make sure that this is uh, tied off so it doesn't move around on us. Uh, how do I want to do this here? Let's just do... Um, uh, well, I guess I... yeah. Can I put this through here and this way? Yes, I can. I probably should just go ahead and install it, but if I need to remove the vertical IC, it's in the way. So I don't want to do that quite yet. Okay, now the stress is not on the on the connections, so. We'll leave that like that, make sure that, well, you know, as a matter of fact, I need to just cut that off of there. And my cutters are in the other room also. I'm just, I've been doing stuff in the other room, working on other stuff. And... All right, well, I have to go grab the remote board and then uh, we'll cut this off of here so make sure it doesn't touch anything. Make sure that stays out of the way. And then I guess what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and hook it up to a tube and see if we can duplicate the problem because the, the normal everyday causes are good so unless it's a bad cap or a bad solder joint, um, I'm not sure right offhand, more troubleshooting will be required, but like I say, it very well may be that they didn't, they don't have one of these installed. If that's possible, or if that's, that's likely, or if that's the issue, then something else could have been damaged. Uh, but because the vertical IC is okay and everything else on the circuit that normally would cause collapse is okay, I'm leaning more against the fact that this is not hooked up. But let's, uh, let me get my cutters, we'll cut that, hook it back up to a tube, and turn it on when I come back and see what we get. Okay, so here we go. Um, we got power plugged in. One, two, three. Oh, it comes on, but it's not making a good sound. And do we have collapse? We do indeed. However, this is not complete collapse. Complete collapse is a thin line. This is not, this is not complete collapse. This is, well, I'd say 95% collapse. The, well, it may be because the brightness is too high. Let's turn our brightness and contrast down. Contrast uh, does nothing, but I'm not worried about that right now. Brightness all the way. See, that's, well, yeah, it may be a thin line here. Hang on. Let's turn our, no. It, it's not complete collapse. Oh, listen. That flyback is, is making all kinds of funky noises. Sounds like it's arcing inside of it. Uh, I think this needs a new flyback. You can hear it. Well, maybe you can't. A moment ago it was, you can hear it like arcing internally. And it's not making good noises. Mm. Well, I think what I'm going to do, 
since I don't want to burn that in, I think what I'm going to do is, ooh, something smells too. Uh, yeah, something is very wrong. I think what I'm going to do here is, since none of our major normal components that cause collapse are bad, I'm going to cap this, I'm going to put a new flyback in it, and do a bunch of reflow on my normal solder work, and if there's anything that I see that is, um, maybe, like, causes this, like, oh, there's the problem, I'll show it. If not, when I come back, I will do, I will show that I, all of the reflow will be done, uh, the cap kit will be done, the flyback will be replaced, I'll have all the neck board rework done. Uh, I've shown all that in other videos. There's really not much else that needs done with this. I'm just going to clean up the, the contacts and reflow the solder onto the traces and get that complete. And I'll do the neck board repair and then we'll show that. And once I'm done with that, yeah, when, and then uh, I guess we'll put this back on here with the new flyback, the cap kit, the reflow. Uh, the neck board repaired and see if we can increase our odds of having this fixed because the normal components that would cause collapse are all good. Uh, I'll do some more poking around and testing but I don't think there's really anything else that normally causes that. The flyback is what outputs the voltage. The flyback, there's a pin off the flyback that goes right to R303. From R303 to D302 and then off over here to this way. So if that voltage is not present or the flyback is faulty, it's not going to put that voltage out to generate the vertical deflection. As a matter of fact, now that I think about it, I didn't even think about it until just now. Let's test to make sure we have our, our 25 volts for deflection. Because if we don't, the only real thing that can cause 20, the 25 volt deflection reference to be missing would be an open R303 or a bad D302. Uh, since those are good, that, and that voltage comes directly from the flyback, this can pretty much verify that our flyback is the issue. I'm uh, going to have to grab a couple of leads here, and our 25 volt reference is actually right here. This 30 volts. Uh, if we look here, on the U5000, you can see plus 30 volt. That's our 25 it's supposed to be 30, but it's more like 25. So I just see our 25 volt reference is right there. And then if we zoom back out here, I need to connect this to here. And then we need a ground, which I've got right here, which we can just clip on to there. And then onto our negative. Okay. All right, let's turn this back on and see if we get our 25 volt reference here. One, two, three. Well, we got 30 volts, so we should have deflection. And we don't, but listen to that flyback. It is, it sounds like, oh, you can hear it ticking. Yeah, I think our flyback is the problem and or bad caps. Yeah, that flyback is stern. There's a swarm of bees in there. So we're going to have to replace that. Fortunately, I have one. So, okay. Well, we have our 30 volts. So because we have our 30 volts, that means R303, D302 is good. Um, we didn't test to make sure that we're getting the 20, or the 30 volts to the vertical IC, but the vertical IC does not read shorted. So it's possible that this could be one of the, the I didn't check... I need to double check because some of these are counterfeit and the counterfeits have the ground on pin 5 versus pin 6 or vice versa, I can't recall. The, whichever pin is supposed to be ground, the counterfeits are the same except they have the ground on the wrong pin. So I may have to remove that and do some testing. I'll do everything I need to do. If I find something that is the smoking gun, I will report back. If not, next time I come back here you'll see that all of the reflow um, rework and flyback went on a neck board. You'll see that's all been done. But if I do find a smoking gun, I'll show that as well. So with the 30 volts reference present, yeah, I'm suspectful of just the flyback being bad. Uh, but it could also be a counterfeit vertical IC. So I'll look into that. If I find that as a, as a, if I find that out as being, you know, the issue, I'll show that. So let me cut away here. I'm, I'm always long-winded and I repeat myself a dozen times and I'm sorry about that. But in the military, I'm used to, I was used to working with idiots that I had to explain things a thousand times to, so that's still kind of with me <laughs> over the years. 
So let me get all this done. If I find something, a smoking gun, I'll let you know. If not, when I come back, I'll have everything redone and ready for testing again and see where we're at from that point. So stand by uh, one moment. Okay, so here we have the neck board. I've done the full cap kit on it, but I haven't done the cleanup and I haven't done the fixing of the res of the transistors, I should say. So I figured I'd show all that here just to uh, add a little bit more content to the video. But I have all the other work done to the main chassis as well since, uh, well, I talked about that. But I also found the problem with it. And I'm not going to go into detail on what the actual problem was until we get this all completely done, repaired, and cleaned up. And then when I get done with this, I will uh, grab the, chass the main chassis and we'll talk about what I found on that. So let's go ahead and get cracking on this. I've already got the caps changed out, like I said. Oh, and I realize now I forgot to mark these ones here. Uh, but, okay. So let's do uh, some repair on these, tra on these transistors that are always bad. Uh, and I think a couple of them actually had... I think a couple of them actually had open traces, if I recall, from earlier. I just take them out completely. You know what? Let's just let's not half-ass this. Let's just use the braid here. A lot of times you can just go back and forth and heat the pads and they'll pull right out, but I don't really want to cause any more damage or make things more difficult for myself. So we'll just grab the old uh, braid here and get these out. Oh, yep. Uh, the, the pad's not broken, but it's so oxidized from heat that uh, it wasn't even connected anymore. And let me show you exactly what I mean. This is why I always like to take these out. There you go. So if we look on the pad, it is so oxidized that you can't even see. See, this is shiny from the solder, shiny from solder. That's just black. And that's all because the solder joint wasn't any good to start with and it created a lot of heat and it just oxidized it so where there was not even a connection. If you recall, I was wobbling it back and forth and it looked like it was broken, but the trace isn't and Brad the trace on the pad isn't broken, it's just so oxidized that the solder popped off of the pad. So we clean we'll clean that up. That's why I always like to actually physically remove these and not just reflow them. Because just simply reflowing them won't reveal that problem and you'll end up back at uh, color issues. I feel this one may be the same. Yep! Same exact problem with that one. It still has a little solder on it, but not much. Is that free? That's free. I don't think this one is though. There we go. Now, same exact thing. Look at this. Right here, there's a little tiny bit there, but the rest of this pad is oxidized and no good. And it's still connected. So I don't think any of these are lifted too bad. I think this one might be lifted a little bit. Yeah, but that's not bad. Uh, that one's okay, that one's okay, that one's lifted. That one's okay. That, well, that one is lifted. Nothing too traumatic compared to how these normally are, but we're two for two on the same pad being bad. So I recommend removing all these bef uh, without... Don't just reflow them. You want to remove them and inspect the pads. Yep, three for three. As the kids today say, uh, show enough. Oh man, that one is... <laughs> there was no solder on that pad. That was another one there that was just wobbling around. Look at this. This is really bad. This one is... There's nothing left on that one as far as anything for that solder to stick to. These two here, a little tiny bit right there, but man, these two are really bad. Well, they won't be bad for long. 
we're going to remedy this situation right now. say that's not perfect I need to do a little bit more on this one but that is much better okay this one here next those two these two are okay gotta hit this one and if the pads lifted you want to be careful you don't go in a circle. I've made that mistake before and broken the pad completely. You want to be a little gentle, but not too gentle because you're trying to get rid of that oxidation. I think that'll work just fine there. Now on to this one. And it's just that easy, ladies and gentlemen. Just that easy. Nice and shiny. Bada bing. Okay. Uh, I don't think I really need anything else on this, so let's put these back in. And make sure when we do this that we separate these nicely. And we're going to have to get rid of some of the solder and I guess it'd probably be a good idea to make sure none of these are shorted before we start and we'll go I think it's this way is it this way there we go okay so base uh, emitter collector I think that's the way it is, 0.6, AC emitter collector, 0.6, and base emitter collector, 0.6. I could have that wrong, but they're not open, they're not shorted, that's all we're worried about. So let's see if we can maneuver these back in here. Uh, yep, that one seems okay, but let's see if we can get these sit down a bit better there we go and when you put these in here you want to make sure that they the heat sink gets so hot you want to make sure that's not physically touching these transistors or any of the re the inductor or the resistor make sure the inductor resistor and trans and transistor are not physically in contact with the heat sink because that will induce heat onto those components and make them fail much much faster so now that we have that done let's make sure it stays there Let's zoom in a bit and solder this puppy in. And what we'll do is we'll use our tweezers here to hold the pad down in place. And there we go. Same thing for this one. And there we have it. That is nice. And are we still good here? We are not touching anything. And yep, I say we're good. We are nice and solid. So let's repeat that process for the other two. And right there, we're sitting on top of the resistor, so we'll kind of massage this around a bit. And we're still in contact with the inductor. So we'll bend. Bend a bit. And 
Uh, that seems okay. Let's get this out of the way. All right, stay right there, you rascal. Oh, you son of a bitch. I didn't get either one of these in there. They moved over on me. All that work, and for what? All right, that one's in. I'm going to have to take this all the way out here. Okay, there we go. Round two. This one doesn't seem to want to sit over. Okay, I think I'll have to solder it in place and then kind of try and massage it over, but anyway. Let's uh, put that on there. And if you do this properly, you don't really have to worry about gluing them back in place. Because you saw those were lifted, and even after they're being lifted, this is still secure on there. So if you do it properly, you don't really have to even worry about gluing the pads back down. And we're pretty darn close there to those. So let's see if I can move that around a bit there. Yeah, that's better. We're not physically touching them, but they're darn close. That's about as, probably about as good as I can get on that. Okay, I think we're two for two. And, yeah, let's grab the third one here. Toss it back in. And, got it. Push it down a little bit, make it seat. I think we're going to be looking pretty good on that. I do say so myself. So let's get this one in. And looking over this, I realize that I should have cleaned this one. Am I going to be able to do this here? I think so. Because we're trying to avoid this happening in the future. And, yep. We are good to go. Look at that. Nice and secure, nice and secure, nice and secure. Of course, you don't want to be too rough, but we're good to go there. Let's bend these back out of the way. And you don't you want to spread these out too, because these will induce heat on the others as they heat up. But there we have a nice new looking neck board. I got all of the pots here wiped back and forth, and then set them to about 25%. Uh, the cutoffs or the drives. The drives can be about halfway, but all of the um, bias pots you want to have for about 25%. Some of these like to be about 50, but for the most part, the whole across the board, 7,400, 7,500, 2,000, 5,000, uh, they all like to be about 25%. Anything higher, the colors tend to bleed, especially the older the tube is. So I just kind of set all these to 25% as a bottom line or baseline, and then we can kind of go from there. But there you have it, a nice rebuilt, new, good looking, well, not new, but good looking neck board. Uh, the back side I have uh, done the reflow on the header pins for the interconnect cable and um, anything else that needed it. And of course we just repaired the uh, transistors. Now what I should do is let me clean this up. Do -do 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 -do. 
Those of you who know, you know. Those of you who don't, I feel sorry for you. Okay, and now we have a clean backside, and we're going to end up having to glue this back in place after all. Actually, I think I'll just solder mask it back in place because I have to cover up with solder mask all this other stuff. So um, the rest of these joints all look fairly good, so I'm not really too worried about reflowing those. I guess I could hit these transistors real quick. I I normally hit those. I'll have to clean this again. But... All right, so let's grab this stuff. And did I bring? I should have. Yep, okay. Let's do a little painting, shall we? All right. Why, oh, why did you have to leave and go away? Yeah, you don't always have to super glue this stuff in place. You, sometimes the, the mask here will do its job because once this hardens it'll stay in place you don't really have to worry about it from that point all right is that all of the exposed traces that we should i think that's all of them now, when this dries, it'll look slightly, slightly better than this, but it's such a contrast, a stark contrast because of the heat-damaged areas, but um, I think that'll be okay. All right, and I think that pretty much wraps it up for this. So the next step is to get all this back together and show the main chassis all hooked back up and done. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And then we'll go over what the fault was and discuss a bit more in detail. So stand by one moment and I'll be back with the main chassis all hooked back up to this and we'll talk about what I found. Okay, and here is the full complete rebuilt chassis. Now I'll show it off here in a moment because as I was setting this up I realized that we forgot to fix this wire on this connector. So let's do that first before we kind of dive into what's going on here. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Okay. So what we'll do here is we will get our crimper and we'll get our new socket and we'll put that in here like so. And then we don't want to go too far because then we can't get this jacket in here. And we'll get that through there. Then we will simply ka-chunk and voila. Perfect. 
So let's get this back in here. And it should go right in. It's this this way, like so. Click. Fantastic. So we again we do not want this wire hooked up to this pin for 25 kilohertz. We want this non-black one, non-connected. Uh, so we will go ahead and set it up to where the black wire is on the pin because we are defaulted to 25, which is here. And then we'll test 15, of course, afterward. And I have to move this over to the white pin or white wire. Uh, but we also need to get this mounted properly. And I need to find a screw that I can use here. Will this fit in here? Yes, all right. So let's get this through, get this around here. All right, and we'll spin this around like a record baby. Let's put this through here. Oh, nice. All right. Now we have our vertical sweep mod permanently mounted. There's no chance of it shorting. And we are good to go. Now that that is complete, let's talk about what I found. So during the interim of when I last left you, uh, we left it with collapse. So I suspected the flyback was bad. We, well, it, it was bad. It was on its way out because it was making all kinds of lightning noises and high-pitched squeals. And it was just internally, it was not happy. So I changed it out and I tested it again and it was still collapsed. So the flyback was on its way out, but it wasn't the cause of the problem. And we kind of already knew that because we had our 30 volts. Uh, most of the time, if you check your, your uh, on uh, I think the 2000 and the, and the other chassis, there's a test pin. There's like a 25 volt reference test pin right here in this area. But on the 5000, it's actually over here because of this vertical sweep mod. And you got to put this pin on the, on the, I'm sorry, this connector on the pin, the 25 volt reference pin. Uh, they moved it over to here. But on the 2000, 74, 75, I'm pretty sure it's over here by the shutdown pot. But uh, and on, those, on those chassis, it's more around 25 volts. So I just say 25 volts. So because we had our 25 volt reference on the pin, if you have your 25 volt reference, you can pretty much rule out the, the chassis as being a problem because it comes off the flyback, it goes straight through R303, through D302, through some other components that really don't cause collapse, over here to D603, and then right to our vertical IC. And because we have our, our 25 volt reference, you pretty much can rule out all, everything on the chassis. So I thought, well, maybe the, the, it's got a bad cap. I, I can't say. So I went ahead and did a full cap kit and a full reflow. I didn't find any suspect pads, no broken pads, no broken traces, no cut traces. Nothing was bad, no bad solder joints. So I went ahead and did the full cap kit, full reflow, full inspection. Couldn't find anything. So I put it back on the tube, tested it, still collapsed. At that point, I thought, well, it has to be the vertical IC. There's nothing else it could be because it's not a solder joint problem. It's not a component problem. It's not a cap problem. It's not the flyback. Uh, we have our 25 volt reference. So I removed the vertical IC, the one that was on this chassis to begin with, and I installed a brand new vertical IC. Put it on the tube, turned it on, bam, full, full deflection, no problem. So this chassis had a bad vertical IC. So it, it just goes to show that even though it doesn't reach shorted, it can still be bad. I, I went through pin by pin. I went uh, pin one to ground, pin two to ground, pin three to ground, and so on. And everything on this read exactly the same as my test chassis over here. Uh, so I found no uh, anomalous readings. No pins were shorted to ground that shouldn't be. Uh, pin five was in fact correct. Um, 
if we test this to ground here, if we go pin one, two, actually this is pin one over here, one, two, three, four, five, five. So pin five is the, the, the pin that's supposed to be grounded. On the counterfeit, I see it's pin six. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. So on the counterfeit, I see it's pin six goes to ground. On the real ones, pin five goes to ground. So you'll notice here, one, two, three, four, five, that's correct, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So no pin shorted to ground, no anomalous readings, but somehow it was still unable to provide deflection. So it, it read okay, but was bad. I put a replacement in, brand new, I had two in stock, put a new one in, full deflection. So it turned out to be a failing flyback, which I don't think was a contributing factor to this, but the flyback was failing. So we had bad flyback, uh, or failing flyback. Original caps needed to be changed out, so new caps, and we had a bad voltage, I'm sorry, I do that every, at least once every time. A bad vertical IC was the cause of this collapse. And it was very interesting because even though we had no inclinations of it being a bad vertical IC, that's where it ended up being. And, and one of the telltale signs is the fact that if you have your 25 volt reference and you have no deflection, uh, you're a pretty safe bet, or it's a safe bet that you have a, a bad IC. So after putting a brand new one in there, it works just fine. So I'm gonna take this and toss it in the garbage and we'll put this away. And this is my loaner uh, remote board, again, from my test chassis. So now that it's all back together and uh, ready for testing, let's go ahead and test it. I do want to show the bottom side of this first. Uh, now that I say that out loud, I realize I forgot to clean it, which will do that. But this has already been reflowed by the previous owner, and it looked pretty good. So I went through and re removed this little jumper. I think I threw it away actually already. I threw it away. If you recall, it had a little jumper here. So when I replaced the IC, I went ahead and removed that jumper and just scraped the trace away and soldered the pin right to the trace. So that's all done. So as you can see here, uh, we have this hooked back up the way it's supposed to be on pin four and it's not touching. It looks like it might be, but it's not. So no pins are, are shorted together. Everything reached fine to where it needs to go for its circuitry and its traces. I had to bend this over and just solder right to here. So that's good. Uh, it looks like this is an open trace, but it's not. It's the green mask between the traces. Uh, this is a trace here, and this is a trace here. This is in between. So it's not actually, this is just that a green solder mask is what that is. So that's not a problem. Uh, yeah, and so I need to go through and do actually clean this up, and I may just go ahead and do that before we test it. But uh, so here you go. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go through and clean all this. I'm going to cut away, clean all this, and when I come back, we'll get it on the tube and we will fire it up and I'll show it to you in operation and then we will call this repaired. Uh, so stand by one moment and uh, we'll see how this goes. All right, so here we go. I'm confident that it'll work. So I have the test pattern generator here ready to go. This is the first time that I've turned it on since I tested it after replacing the vertical IC. I replaced the vertical IC, turned it on and verified it wasn't collapsed anymore and turned it off and I have not turned it on ever since. So after getting the neck board all fixed up and cleaned up, after getting all of the main chassis cleaned up, getting this uh, vert the vertical sweep mod mounted, and uh, yeah, giving it one last look over and setting the pots to the correct position and everything that it needs to be ready to test. I haven't turned it on since then. So after getting all that done, now we are ready to go again. We have anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, video, and remote. So here we go. Final test here, hopefully. Let's turn this on. And here we go. One, two, three. Okay. No more odd noises from the flyback. And... Yeah, we need to... Oh, I have it set to standard. And we're way too bright. Uh, let's turn this off again. Alright, so let's flip this off. Go back to medium res. Turn our brightness down slightly, and let's try this again. One, two, three. Wow, we are still way too bright. Okay, brightness all the way down, contrast all the way... Nope, nope, that's vertical size. Contrast all the way down, brightness all the way down. Let's turn our flyback down until we lose... Yikes, okay, roughly... Let's go right there, okay. Now let's turn brightness. Oh, I got to turn this back on. 
Ka chink Hey, there we go. <laughs> Ka-chink! Gotta turn that back on. Okay. Brightness. Whoa, way too bright. Let's turn it down to roughly there. Contrast. Nice. Okay. Uh, do we have RGB? Look at that. Outstanding. Let's move each position. Not that it matters, but it'll change when I do... Um, let's change to standard res. Okay, roughly there and there. Outstanding. Vertical size. Lovely. Well, look at that. Outstanding. This is our convergence. Convergence looks fantastic. All right. So we're good on 25. Let's turn it off. Turn it off. Switch to standard. Move this over to standard. And move our jumper over to the white wire. Ah, oh, nice. Nice and secure with that new socket. Okay. Uh, on. All right, let's make sure standard res works. One, two, three. Hachi machi. Uh, each position back over to here. Uh, right there's the edge. Whoa, we're way too wide, but that's okay. So we'll roughly go right there where we have that much there and that much there. And we'll decrease our width. All uh, right, here, there we go. Black and black. Vertical size is too high. Let's bring that down. Black a little bit, and let's do vertical position roughly there. Well, there you go, ladies and gents. Repaired U5000. Let's dis connect this. I want to try an actual PCB. So let's turn... Well, I don't actually, you know, I don't think I have my boards. My boards are in down in the basement. I was using it to troubleshoot some other stuff. So um, I'll test some other boards, actual PCBs uh, off camera. But as you can see, working great. Looks great. Ready to last another number of years. So that's about it. Long story short here is we had a, a failing flyback, squealing, making all kinds of internal uh, explosion noises. It's much more, it was much more pronounced here in person, I imagine, than on camera from what you're able to pick up. And we had a bad vertical IC. It wasn't shorted, wasn't open. Everything read out just exactly the same as my uh, test chassis over here. But it just didn't work. So I put a brand new one in, back in business. Full cap kit, full reflow, normal rebuild, neck board rework, and it's uh, ready to live again for a long time. So, uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Stay tuned. Got uh, two 7500s to do uh, after this one, one after the other. So stay tuned for those. I appreciate it. Like, share, and subscribe. And we will see you next time.